Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Indian security forces neutralized two Jaish terrorists in Jammu and Kashmir. Pakistan pushing drugs into India. And India warns of Afghanistan becoming safe haven for terrorists. Let's begin the show with India's Jammu and Kashmir, where the security forces are on high alert. They are trying hard to finish terrorism in the valley, and parked-backed terrorists are being killed one after the other. In the latest operation, Indian security forces neutralized two dreaded Jaish terrorists in Sapor and three Lashkar terrorists, including Danish Pat, who was involved in several civilian killings in Shopian district. Pakistan is enraged by the stability and progress in Jammu and Kashmir and does all in its power to sow instability and violence in the region. However, a series of operations are being carried out by the Indian security forces in Jammu and Kashmir to dismantle the network of park back terrorism. Recently, terrorist organizations operating in the valley just suffered a severe blow. In the latest operation, Indian security forces neutralized two Jaish terrorists identified as Muhammad Rafi and Kaiser Ashraf in Sapur area of Baramula district. A civilian also sustained injuries in the exchange of fire. Adding to this, security forces eliminated three Lashkar terrorists namely Danish Khurshid Bhatt, Tanvir Wani and Tosi Bhattin in Shobhya district. An information concerning the presence of terrorists in the region was sent to a joint team of police and security services. After which security forces launched a cordon and a search operation in the area. एसएसपी सोपियन को आ, कल इंफॉर्मेशन मिला था कि सोपियन के नागवल एरिया में तीन लश्कर तैयार के टेरिस छिपे हुए हैं पुलिस आर्मी सीआरपी मिलकर कॉटन डाला कॉटन डालते ही सर्च शुरू हो गई इनकाउंटर स्टार्ट हो गया जिसमें सबसे पहले हम लोग सिविलियन को वहां से निकाले और तीनों लश्कर तैयार के टेरिस मारा गया तीनों लोकल है सबसे बड़ी बात है कि इसमें कोई कोलेटरल डैमेज नहीं हुआ है और दानिश जो भट्ट है बहुत खूंखार टेरिस था काफी सिविलियन किलिंग इन्वॉल्व था और रिक्रूटमेंट में काफी इन्वॉल्व था Islamabad continuously works to increase the level of terrorism related activity in Jammu and Kashmir. The last 3 to 4 weeks have seen this and it is related to the state of affairs in Pakistan. Their army is being openly questioned, their economy is in shambles and the inflation is at an all time high. Instances like these have never occurred in Pakistan. Therefore, engineering strikes in Kashmir serve as a diversion. As per Jammu and Kashmir police reports, in 75 encounters that took place in Kashmir in 2022, 126 militants were killed. 33 of these 126 terrorists were largely from Pakistan. However, several terror acts in the valley have also claimed the lives of 19 civilians and 16 members of the security forces. The security forces have seized around 190 over-the-ground workers this year, in addition to more than 50 terrorists. Indian security forces are being extremely successful. If you look at the overall terror attacks, they are down very significantly. Uh, you know, we can't prevent every terror attack everywhere. That is physically impossible. Remember, America for all its sophistication and the USSR for all its brute strength could control Afghanistan. When you have a, uh, uh, a, a terror situation like this, uh, the aim of the terrorist is to provoke an overreaction by the state uh, resulting in the deaths of large numbers of civilians, uh, which essentially plays into their agenda. Now, you can't do that, obviously, because these are our people. And 
in that situation, you're going to have a few terrorist attacks every year. There's nothing you can do to stop it. Uh, unfortunately, this is the reality of it. So on balance, we're doing pretty well dealing with this. Kashmiris have suffered much as a result of terrorist groups supported by the Pakistani army and ISI, the nation's spy agency, and many have died in proxy war facilitated by Pakistan. Islamabad is unlikely to put an end to its proxy war in Kashmir because it's the most economical way to slay India with a thousand blows. As a result, the problem needs to be addressed by Kashmir's government. According to experts, since the situation demands hard intelligence, the police and security forces in Jammu and Kashmir must work in synergy, as the series of these attacks must be stopped immediately. Moving on. Pakistan's primacy in the international narcotics trade and the funding of terrorist activities has been time and again confirmed by several investigation agencies worldwide. There are clear indications that Pakistani-based narco-terrorist networks have stepped up their activities on the Indo-Pakistan international border. Recently, National Investigation Agency apprehended the 12th accused in connection with Handwara narco-terrorism case. He has been identified as Abdul Rauf Badin, a resident of Jammu and Kashmir's Kupwara. A report. Narco-terrorism is an integral component of Pakistan's state sponsorship of cross-border terrorism used as to fund and conduct asymmetric warfare against its neighbours. Over 80% of drugs in India are infiltrating from neighbouring Pakistan. The country's intelligence agencies have been working with terror groups on a kill two birds with one stone strategy to smuggle weapons and narcotics into India through the same routes. Islamabad has been heavily relying on the sale of drugs in Kashmir to fund its trader infrastructure. Recently, the National Investigation Agency arrested Abdul Rauf Padin for his involvement in the case of supply of narcotics, cash, arms and ammunition through LOC border in Amrohi area by concealing the consignment in a vegetable carrier vehicle. Earlier, NIA has filed a charge sheet against a total of 11 terrorists in connection with deep-rooted conspiracy for procuring and selling narcotic drugs and generating funds in Jammu and Kashmir and other parts of India in close association with operatives of Park back terror organizations Lashkar and Hezbollah Mujahideen. Ever since the operation All Out started, and then after that the abrogation of Article 370 took place, the National Investigation Agency of India has been on the track of all these people who were instrumental in propagating militancy, funding militancy, and getting all the money that was through Hawala transactions or any other transactions, and distributing it amongst the stone pelters, the militants and others and all anti-national elements over there. Now, once the NIA got after all these people, the flow of money coming inside through these channels dried up. Pakistan has recently employed a dual strategy to maintain the conflict and undermine the social fabric of the valley, delivering both weapons and drugs. The most often used opiate in Kashmir is heroin that is trafficked from Pakistan. Drug trafficking across borders give terrorism financial support and if not stopped immediately, could damage the lives of the region's children. The finances generated from drugs such as heroin fund separatist activities and spread other centrifugal tendencies. Increasingly, terror modules that have been busted in the recent past by security agencies show a more significant challenge to society and security. We are finding that every day in and day out, we find that they are having seizures, whether it's in vehicles or even otherwise. And the drops that are being done by the drones, uh, 
whether it's in Punjab, whether it's in Jammu Kashmir, on the international border or the LOC, those are also being monitored and people are being arrested. The nexus between drug traffickers, criminal networks and terrorists are a potent threat. Expoliation of the trafficking rules by terrorists with the help of well-entrenched criminal networks to infiltrate with arms and explosives have added a criminal dimension to the security of the borders. Moreover, large-scale availability of narcotics and trucks encourages demand for narcotics and drugs by domestic population. Consumption of which produces dysfunctional behaviour thereby creating law and order problem in the society. Therefore, India needs to adopt a comprehensive approach to tackle this challenge. At United Nations Security Council, India warned of Afghanistan becoming a safe haven for terrorist organizations. And the terrorism emanating from Afghanistan is becoming a threat to other countries. India called for unified action against the terror groups getting entrenched there. Indian diplomat Ruchira Kamboch said that the Taliban, which now controls Afghanistan, needs to take much stronger action to fulfill their anti-terrorism commitments. The world's focus may already have switched to other international events in the months following the Taliban's return to power in Afghanistan. But the Afghan crisis continues to be a significant affair for India. India recently expressed grave concerns at the UN on the huge increase in the presence of the Islamic State Khorasan province in Afghanistan. With its alleged stronghold in Afghanistan, the ISILK continues to issue threats of terrorist attacks against other countries. Al-Qaeda in the Indian subcontinent and the Islamic State Khorasan province have both recently released statements threatening strikes in India. India has cautioned that the peace and stability of the region are directly at risk due to connections between banned organizations like the jesh e Muhammad and lashkar e taiba both of which are based in Pakistan. The recent findings of the 1988 Sanctions Committee's analytical support and the Sanctions Monitoring Team report indicate that the current authorities need to take much stronger action to fulfill their anti-terrorism commitments. There is a significant increase in the presence of ISIL-K in the country and their capacity to carry out attacks. ISIL-K, with its base reportedly in Afghanistan, continues to issue threats of terrorist attacks on other countries. According to a report from the UN Secretary General, there has never been a moment when terrorist organizations have had more freedom in Afghanistan and there are no indications that the Taliban leadership has taken any action to rein in the operations of foreign terrorists there. The report claims that ISIS-K is taking advantage of the unrest in the nation by, among other things, recruiting fighters from the Turkestan Islamic Party and the Eastern Turkestan Islamic Movement. It seeks to establish itself as Afghanistan's leading opponent and to spread into the surrounding Central and South Asian nations. The UN members are worried that if the situation in Afghanistan worsens, some violent extremists from Afghanistan and elsewhere would join ISIS. India has so emphasized the need for tangible efforts to ensure that terrorists and other groups that are outlawed by the UN do not receive any support from Afghanistan or from safe havens located there. India expressed alarm at the UN on a rise in violence against minority groups there, such as the Hazara, Hindu and Sikh minorities. Recently, ISIS-K targeted several religious places of minority communities, including the recent attack on a Sikh Gurudwara in Kabul on June 18, followed by another bomb blast near the same shrine on July 27, which is hugely alarming. The series of attacks at religious places of the minority community, including the recent attack 
at the Sikh Gurudwara on 18 June in Kabul, followed by another bomb explosion near the same Gurudwara on 27 July, is hugely alarming. The linkages between groups listed by the UN Security Council, such as the Lashkar-e Toiba and the Jaish-e Muhammad, as well as provocative statements made by other terrorist groups of operating out of Afghanistan, pose a direct threat to the peace and stability of the region. We need to see concrete progress in ensuring that such proscribed terrorist entities or their aliases do not get any support tacit or direct, either from Afghan soil or from the terror sanctuaries based in the region. As a contiguous neighbor and long-standing partner of Afghanistan, India has direct stakes in ensuring the return of peace and stability. India has urged for a comprehensive political system in Afghanistan that reflects all groups of Afghan society, including women. For both local and foreign participation, a broad-based, inclusive and representative formation is required. When Kabul fell on August 15, the scenes were heartbreaking. Thousands of people turned up at the airport. All of them were hoping for a ride out of the country to escape reprisals from the Taliban. Unfortunately, not everyone was evacuated. The UN estimates that there are more than 3 million Afghan refugees living around the world. That makes them the third largest refugee in the world. How are they coping with the crisis back home? Do they dream of going back home? A journalism graduate of Kabul University, Aman Azimi once worked with the Korean Provincial Reconstruction Team in Afghanistan, a country that was his home until a year ago. Now settled thousands of miles away in South Korea, he is working in a factory where plastic products are packed. Aman's current work is far different from what he had aspired to. However, he is not willing to return to Afghanistan in the near future, and he is struggling to survive in a completely new environment. Aman's story is one among thousands of similar accounts of Afghan refugees, who have been provided long-term stay on foreign soil after the takeover of Kabul by the Taliban. It's so hard to lose everything, that uh, especially your homeland, but uh, you are you are not sure when you will visit again your family your 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 hometown uh, on that time it was so hard for us last year the end of the war in afghanistan created a new refugee crisis the crisis came at a time when more than 2 million afghan refugees were already in neighboring countries Soon after the takeover of Kabul by the Taliban, more than 120,000 Afghans were airlifted from the country and scattered around the world. Since then, hundreds of thousands have left the country, and a large number of Afghans are still struggling to flee. The Taliban's hardline policies and the deteriorating humanitarian situation in the war-torn country have compelled people to leave their motherland in increasing numbers. According to the United Nations Human Rights Council, there are 2.6 million registered Afghan refugees in the world, of whom 2.2 million are registered in Iran and Pakistan alone. There are many more refugees who haven't been registered or who are currently asylum seekers. Afghans are dispersed around the world, from America to Europe, from Australia to India. India is currently home to more than 15,000 Afghan refugees, most of them scattered across New Delhi's central neighborhoods. Many Afghans have chosen India because of regional proximity and friendly historical ties between the two countries. A large number of Hindus and Sikhs from Afghanistan who have faced frequent terror attacks have also been provided shelter in India. The businesses and holy places of Hindu and Sikh minorities in Afghanistan were previously targeted by the Taliban and are now being targeted by the Islamic State. 
उन तालिबान की तो इस तरह दिक्कत नहीं वहाँ पर अलग 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 इस तरह जो आतंकवादी बोलते हैं वो लोग के इसीलिए अफगानिस्तान को छोड़ते नहीं हैं हालात से आराम इससे पहले जो हालात थे जो अशरफ गनी था उसमें भी इसी तरह हालात थे आज भी वही हालात थे ये खास इसलिए ये कर रहे हैं गवर्नमेंट को बदनाम के लिए सिखों को टारगेट करना गैर मजहब लोगों को टारगेट करना उन लोगों का मिशन है The new wave of the Afghan refugee crisis comes at a time when thousands of Afghans are already internally displaced. As these refugees lack the required resources, migration is not an easy task for them. But for those who successfully fled the country, war struggles followed them. Though new lands have provided them with safety, their new lives remain full of challenges. Furthermore, there have also been some reports of detention and deportations of these refugees. At present, there is no remedy for their suffering, and no one knows when the four decades of dispossession will come to an end. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views, and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa@nim.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.